Hello and welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and today we have got something well completely unique and innovative for you. It's called Lego House and it's by Analytical Ninja and we've already had a couple of recommendations for this. It's only just come out I believe. Um, it has an extraordinary 99% approval rating on Logic Masters Germany despite only having two stars out of five for difficulty so it's a rare beast from that perspective. But it's also a rare beast because, believe it or not, I, I think the best way to describe this puzzle is as 10 puzzles wrapped up in one Sudoku. You'll see what I mean uh, when I read the rules. Um, this, is, this is really, really interesting um, and I'm looking forward to giving it a go. Um, but before I do, I have some birthday shout outs to do. So firstly, let's start with Megan and Frankie, who both turned 16 today. I think they're best friends um, and we had a lovely email from Megan so we hope you have a brilliant day with loads of cake of course and also Kieran Hodgson uh, from Hull I think it's your birthday I don't know how old you are um, but I, I wish you well today and I hope you have a splendid day as well hopefully with a good solve of Lego house um, other than that um, Domino Sudoku don't forget it's come out on Steam now as well so if you've been waiting for it on PC it is available it's obviously been out for a couple of weeks on Android and on the app store we're really proud of it it's been over a year in the making um, so do check that out if you have a chance and don't forget that if we get to 500,000 subscribers we're going to be releasing a free app to celebrate which is quite a cool thing um, and other than that I did record this morning I haven't had a chance to um, upload it yet a crossword video so um, Mike Hutchinson who's the independent crossword editor recommended me a recent puzzle by a constructor called Filbert which I had a go at and it was absolutely brilliant Filbert apparently has been making waves in the cryptic crossword world because They've been setting incredible, incredible puzzles. And I can absolutely assure you that the one I did earlier today, it was quite difficult, mind you, but it was brilliant. So that hopefully will come out tomorrow on the channel, probably around 10 o'clock in the morning. Now, let me read you these rules. Now, prepare yourself. This is a long rule set, but you're not going to believe some of the things I'm about to say as I read these rules out. So the rules are as follows. Digits on an arrow sum to the digit in that arrow's circle. So there's nothing terribly unusual there. Um, digits can repeat along arrows if allowed by other rules. Now, alarm bells should now be ringing because normally, of course, you can't repeat digits uh, in a box of a Sudoku. Um, but let me let me continue. In cages, digits must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage. Digits cannot repeat within a cage. So those three cells sum to 12, for example. Now, this is when it gets strange. This puzzle is solved in two stages. Stage one. Normal 9x9 nine nine Sudoku rules do not apply. Solve each 3x3 three three box within the grid independently, so ignoring the rest of the grid. I.e. three digits selected from 1 to 9 need to be placed in each row column of that 3x3 three three box once each. So I think we have to treat each of these 3x3 three three boxes as totally separate. So if we look at that one, for example, um, we've got to... Decide which of the, well, we have to pick three of the digits from one to nine that we think can fulfill the constraints in this box. And this is why digits can repeat along arrows, because presumably we could, I don't know, we could put three and three in there, adding up to six or something like that, because we're not worried about Sudoku um, or in the rest of the grid. We're not really, we're only treating this as a three by three Sudoku, which is a very strange concept indeed. Um, now, stage two, erase all digits within the grid whose box number does not match their row. Their, sorry, does not match their row number. E.g., you'll keep the digits in row four, column one, two, and three within box four. So we keep those digits is what we're being told. So let's just think about another box. Let's go to this box and work out what we'd keep in there. So. We need to erase all digits within the grid whose box number, well, this is box number eight. Uh, if you're in any doubt about that, let me just explain. I mean, the boxes in Sudoku are classically numbered as you would read them. So this is box one, this is box two, this is box three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So within box eight down here, um, we keep, we basically keep the digits 
where the row number matches the box number. So we keep those three digits in the grid and we discard the rest. And then it says, then solve the puzzle as a regular killer arrow Sudoku using the remaining digits as givens, i.e. normal Sudoku rules will apply at this point. Now this is, a, I mean, this is extraordinary for many reasons. If this had been a five star out of five for difficulty puzzle, I don't think any of us would have been terribly surprised at this point, but it's two stars out of five. So it's meant to be very, very approachable. Um, so <laughs> I think I think all we can do is have a go at it and see how it goes. Do have a go yourselves. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual as Maverick takes off with alarming punctuality um, to buzz past my window. Uh, but now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And I suppose what we should do in a way is just pick a box here. I'm going to pick the most busy looking box. Let's pick that box. Um, and then I'm going to actually just blacken the rest of the grid because the rest of the grid, if I understand the rules correctly, is totally irrelevant. We just have to solve this box as a three by three Sudoku. I haven't done many three by three Sudokus in my life. Can we just write it in the answers? Um, okay. I can, well, I can tell you some things about this straight away, actually. This probably, yeah, maybe this is why. Maybe each of the little puzzles are not very difficult. So what, all right, I think there might be a couple of ways of approaching this. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that, where does that digit go in, in row, row two of this three by three? Well, it can't go on its own arrow. Because the moment it went, if that was a six, for example, and we put a six there, then these two would both have to be zero. And the rules are crazy, but they're not that crazy. So the only place blue could go is here, which means blue's got to be there. And now we're just going to be able to colour in the rest of this. So this digit, whatever it is, has got to go there by Sudoku, because it can't go here. And that, therefore, it goes there. And therefore, these three digits are the same. Actually, orange is a terrible colour. I can't, I can't see the arrow. But, oh, I still can't see the arrow. Hang on. Let me find a colour where I can see the arrow. Red? Yes. Okay, so now what we shall say is that, um, well, yes, here's a little point for us. So we know that the 14 cage contains three different digits and it contains the, the blue and the red digit there and there. So those two digits add up to 10. So that digit's a four and we're away. So those are all fours. And now this arrow, well, okay, so this cell is the sum of two digits plus four, but we know that the, we know that the digits overall sum to, we know that red and blue together sum up to 10, don't we? So how do we think about that? So we've got to do, we've got to do eight and double two, don't we? So the, yeah, so if this is eight, 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 then I can double two that arrow and two plus two plus four is equal to eight. So that works and nothing else will work there. Let's just prove that to ourselves. If we go double nine, um, these are gonna have to be all ones and this arrow will fail now because basically we're adding, um, we're adding, well, you can see it would have to be an even number here. That's, that, that's what's something we could have seen because we're adding two to an even number. We're adding two lots of red to an even number to come up with this number. But, but six and four won't, sorry, six and four can't work because we've already used the four anyway. Um, so we must be using two and eight. It's the only, only option that works from a parity <laughs> and an arrow perspective and all sorts of things. So we must go four, 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 um, eight, two, 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 eight, Eight. And there we go. We've, we've done a box and we should therefore uncolor this box. Well, I suppose we'll blacken that box and pick another box to look at. Anyone have any suggestions as to where we'll look now? Let's have a look at this box. That looks like it's got some big numbers in it. Um, and I suppose what I'm, I'm going to try that trick again, actually. So this is the trick where we're going to, I'm just going to color in the digits. I can see there's a three in this box as well, but let's try this cell. That cell can't go on its own arrow for the same reasons as it couldn't go on its own arrow in that one. So it's got to go in there in the top row, which means in the middle row, it's got to go here by Sudoku. And now that digit's got to go there and there. So those are three, 
positions and these are three other positions. And now, okay, so now we can see that these two cells, whatever these are, we're, we're doubling blue to end up with this circular digit. So this circular digit must be even and it's in a 15 cage. So it's got to be a six or an eight. I'm sure I'm not doing this in the most efficient way, but this is the way I'm going to do it. Um, so now let's, let's fill in some digits here. We know there must be a three. Uh, oh, I see, and the three is blue. Yes, let, look, let, let's, let's have a look. At, we know that the 18 cage contains red and green in those two positions. So if these two add up to 15, that must be a three. And therefore, we actually get this arrow sorted out. It's double three adding up to six. So that's all sorted out. Then the nine must complete the greens. And there's another little puzzle done. So we've now done two puzzles and we can have a look at another box. Let's have a look at, he says, trying to pick one that looks interesting. Maybe this one. Let's have a look at that one. That's got a lot going on in it. So this one has got, um, yes, okay. Well, I can see there's got to be a one in this box because this contains all three of the digits, obviously, and two of the digits add up to 13. So the other digit must be a one. There's got to be a one in here, therefore. Um, now, the one cannot be in the circle, can it? So this digit has to appear in the 13 cage. So whatever that is, has to be in the 13 cage. Ah, I, uh, there's a, okay. Ah, here's a way to think about this. There may be a very quick way to think about it, but the way I've just thought about it is the following. How many odd numbers are there in this Sudoku, <laughs> this three by three Sudoku? Well, the answer must be two altogether. There's a, there's a one in it, that's odd. And in a 13 cage, there must be an odd and an even number because it's an odd number that we're summing to. So it's going to be the sum of an odd and an even number. So that means this cage contains two odd numbers and one even number. So how are we going to make uh, this cage down here work? Well, if this was an even number, this would have to be the sum of both the other odd numbers, which is impossible, I think, because once, because we'd have to therefore put one on here and we would be saying that this even number which could only be, it's adding, it's, it's got to be capable of adding up to 13 and it's got to be bigger than the odd number. So it would have to be eight, five or something and that's not gonna work. And six would go with seven, which would mean that the arrow added up to more than the circle, which also won't work. So this is not even, so it must be odd. And if it's odd, if it's odd, it can't be the sum of two even numbers. And there's only one even number in the box anyway. So that so it must be the sum of the one. So the one must be on the arrow. And therefore, the circle digit is one different from the other digit that's on this arrow. In other words, this has to be a six, seven pair. That's what I'm concluding. So that's got to be seven. That's got to be six by Sudoku. That's got to be one by Sudoku. So that's six, that's seven, that's six. <laughs> this is seven, this is one, and this is one. And there's another box done. Right, this is fascinating. It's absolutely fascinating. Um, and I'm I'm not sure it's that easy. Maybe, maybe I'm making a Horlix of it, but some of these, they do require a little bit of thought, even though they're three by threes. Uh, this one I'm just going to colour, am I? Is that going to be the way to do this? Surely, yeah. I mean, that digit, where's it going in column three? It's not going on its own arrow again, so it's got to go there. Therefore, that's a cell. And as soon as you get one number fixed in these three by threes, you can always do the other numbers as well. So those those have got to be three, and those have got to be... Ah, and that, that is interesting. So in this box, we've suddenly learned something. We've learned that the circle is the sum of two yellow digits. Therefore, the circle is even. Um, right. And I can see immediately it can't be a two, because if this is double one, this cage can't add up to 16. 
Surely it can't be 4 either. No, that's going to be 4 and 2, which would require this to be 10. So we're already in a world where this is 6 or 8. Now if it's 6, this has to be double 3, and this has to be 7 to add up to 16. And that works, I think. Which means there must be something wrong with 8, otherwise we've got two solutions to this one. Ah, no, it's fine. 8 doesn't work, because 8 requires double 4 on the arrow. And what's this cell got to be then? It's got to be another 4, and I've got too many 4s in the grid. So it's that's beautiful. So it's got to be 6, double 3, with 7 here. 7, 7, 3, double 6. And there we go, that's another one done. <laughs> I've got I've nearly done half of it. Let's look. Um, I'm going to look at this one. I think that the arrows are the things to look at because we can sort of immediately do this colouring trick. Because um, again, this circle is the sum of three different digits, so it can't. We can't put blue here, or we've got a problem. So blue's got to go there. Blue's got to go there. Now that digit, whatever that digit is, can't go here in the top row. So it must go here and here. Aha. Aha, well that's very interesting straight away, because now this circle is the sum of three three digits that are the same. So this has either got to be, so this number is basically mod three now, it's well, zero mod three, it's got to be divisible by three, because we're, it's expressible as three X, whatever yellow is, we'll call X. So that's either three, six or nine. Um, and, Therefore, oh no, nine doesn't work. Nine, nine, nine clearly doesn't work because then we'd have to put nine and three in these two cells, and that's definitely more than ten. Six with two doesn't work because then I'd have to have another two. If this is six and these are all twos, then this has to be two again, and I've got a problem. So actually, the correct answer is the one I was least expecting, which is three with double one or triple ones. 3 goes here, 3 goes here, and that's a 6, and that's a 6, and that's a 6, and that's another little puzzle done. There we go. So I've now done more than half of the first part of this puzzle. But now we've got a question. Right, let's look at this one. That, that looks like it's got a lot of little cages in it. So again, I'm going to colour that. Can't go here. So where does it go in row 3? It's got to go here, here. Therefore, that digit's going to go there and there, and these three digits are going to go into those cells. Now, what have we learned? Again, we've got a similar thing, look. We're adding two of the same digit to this, so this has got to be even. Um, and therefore, he says, well, yeah, that's, that's problematic, isn't it? So this can't be a one, because then that would be five, and that wouldn't be even. So if that's a 2, 2, 2, 4, it would, would, it would work. And anything else is going to break the, break, the, break the circle, isn't it? Because this digit has to be capable of being in a 6 cage. But we know that this digit is the higher one of the two digits that are in the 6 cage. I.e. this one way of thinking about this is to say that must be a 4, 5 and that must be a 1 or 2. Because there are only two ways of making 6 in two digits. It's either going to be 1, 5 or 2, 4. And the only one of these that's even is the 4. So there, we've done it again. So it's got to be this. And hopefully, if I've not made a ricket... Hang on, how am I going to get this other digit? Oh. Oh, no, I couldn't... For some reason, I couldn't see the 7 gauge. I was thinking, how on earth am I going to disambiguate this? But there we go. I've done it. That's fine. It was just me being blind. And now I've done... Uh, six of the of the little puzzles. Let's do this one um, because again I can see it's clear that I can't put this digit on its own arrow so that's going to live down there, it's going to live there, that digit's going to live there and there. Oh I see what's happening here. This one's quite interesting. So this one is interesting because look look what those two cells add up to. Isn't it weird? It's brilliant, this. These tiny little puzzles have little, like, vignettes of, of logic that you can just suddenly... So this is a 9, I've seen that. But, and that's because, look, this cage adds up to 8, but those two cages are on the arrow and add up to 8. Those two cells, because they're the same colour. 
So if this adds up to 8, there's no way this can be less than 9. And in fact, we can actually fill in all the digits now. It's got to look like that. 777991. And that one's just done. Isn't that beautiful? That's really, it's just quality stuff, this. Right, we'll finish with the middle box, hopefully. We'll try this one now. So again, I'm going to do exactly the same trick. Boom, boom, boom. Because this can't go on its own arrow or it'll, it'll break. Let's do the middle digit now. That's going to have to go there. We always seem to end up with one of the diagonals filled with the same digit I'm noticing. I've never thought of that in the context, concept, context of a 3x3 three three Sudoku before, but that does seem to be the case. Um, so what have we got here? We have got a something where this is definitely the largest digit. And we've got two lots of a digit adding up to this. So this can't be right. So one way of thinking about this is that in the context of the eight cage, this is the higher digit. So if you think of the three ways of making eight, we've got one, seven, two, six, and three, five. So this is always the lower digit, and this is always the higher digit. But whoops, sorry, five. I wanted to do that. Now this can't be five, three, because then I'm doubling three on the arrow. So this would have to be a minus one to make it add up to five. So we can remove that as an option. Now, if we've got six and two, no, that doesn't work because this would have to be another two. So if we did six, two, two, this has to be a two again. So I hope seven and one is what we're looking at. And then that's five and then it works. So that is fixing this one, I think. Just checking the maths, that does look right. There we go, boom. And then this one, oh, sorry, I need to blacken out this one. It's going to be intriguing to see what puzzle we get as a result of all this. Um, so how do we do this one? Well, one thing I can see straight away is that this 12 cage, which cannot contain a repeated digit, must therefore contain the two digits that are in the 10 cage. Therefore, the other digit that's in the 12 cage must be a 2. OK, so now where does the 2 go in row 5 of the group, row 3, uh, row 2, row 2, row 2 of the 3 by 3? Well, we know these two digits are adding up to adding up to 10, aren't they? And they're not that digit. So that must be the 2, which is the sort of other digit in the, in the, in the, in, in the world. Now, where does 2 go in the top row? It must go here because it can't be within a cage. And there we go. We've managed to color this one in. So that digit's got to go there, and that one's the diagonal digit. Let's, let's do some better coloring. And those digits are the same. And therefore, what have we got now? We've got a situation where we need two digits here that add up to 10, where their difference is 2. So they must be 6 and 4, I think. That feels right to me. 6 is equal to 4 plus 2, so that works. 6 and 4 add up to 10, so that works. And there's no other way of making 10 in two or two digits of two Sudoku digits where they those two digits differ by two. So six, four, 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 six, six, done. Now, so ordinarily at this point, we'd be thinking, yay, we've done the puzzle, but we very much haven't. We've got to do the next bit. So the next bit is saying, erase all digits within the grid whose box number does not match their row number. So let's look at box one. So row one stays, doesn't it? And all those digits, oh, this, this feels sad to do this. I've got to just get rid of them. Okay. And then in box two, row two must stay. So those digits go away. And then in this box, we get rid of the, we just leave behind row three. So we leave behind row four in box four, row five in box five, row six in box six, Row seven in row se box seven, sorry. Um, row eight in box eight and row nine in box nine. So we actually, we get quite a full grid. It's very rare I get to do Sudokus on, in the channel where I have this many given digits. So I'm guessing this is not going to be totally monstrous. Those have got to be a seven, eight pair now. So this is now normal, normal Sudoku, isn't it? In fact, look, I can get this digit because if that was a seven, this arrow would require a four here and it can't be a four. So that's got to be eight, that's got to be seven, that's got to be five. 
clear, which means I need one, two, and four into those cells, which means I can place the two, the one, and the four, and box two is done, I believe. Um, hello, Maverick, again. So these cells are two, five, and nine, and those cells are one, four, and eight. And I need to make sure this, look, well, these two cells have got to add up to, oh, there are a few ways of doing that. I was going to say that these have got to add up to 16 and therefore these have got to add up to 10, but 1, 9 and 2, 8 are available. We get rid of 4 and 5 here, but how we get, we can't put 9 on an arrow, so that's got to be 2, that's got to be 4, therefore that's got to be 8, therefore that's got to be 1, and oh, I don't seem to be able to do the 5 and the 9 yet, but never mind. Um, ooh, I've got a 7 cage there that can't be 5, 2 or 3, 4 so that's got to be 1, 6 let's fill that in um, I've got a 12 cage here that requires these two to equal 10 they can't be 1, 9, 2, 8 or 4, 6, so these are 3, 7 which I can do, yeah, okay so I think what Ana Analytical Ninja has done here is just, it's almost flexing isn't it? It's saying, not only have I entertained you with nine consecutive three by three little puzzles, but now I'm going to show you that I've actually coordinated all these in a rather sweet puzzle that you can also solve. Um, now, that's a five or a nine. This can't be a three, so that can't be a th uh, five. So nine and five go in, that's got to be a seven. Um, therefore, what are those then? They're eight and something, eight and three. Ah, don't know. Okay, so that's three and eight. These squares are one, five. Whoops, one, five and nine, if I could type. So what are the options for this? It can't be one, nine, two, eight, four, six. So it's three, seven, and we can do the order. So that's seven, three, that's six. Those have got to add up to 13 without being five, eight, or six, seven. So this is four, nine, which we can do. Um, this might be an interesting place to look. We've got a seven arrow. So these two squares have got to add up to six, but they're not five, one. So they've got to be two, four. Oh, my phone's going again. Um, and that means, what does that mean? Where's the easy, where's the easy win now? That's a two by Sudoku, there's an easy win. That's got to be a five. Oh, this arrow I've not even looked at, but let's fill that in because that's doable. 9, 5. So these squares at the bottom are 3, 5 and 8. We can put the 8 here. We can put the 3 here. We can put the 5 there. And that's working with this arrow, so that's good. That suggests we're on the right path. This is 1, 8 and 9. So that's 8. That's 1. That's 9. This is 3, 8 and 9. So that's 3. That's 8. And that's 9. Um, these squares are 3, 6 and 8, where we can put the 6 in. Um, what did I say? 8 was one of them. I can't put 8 on a 6 arrow, so the 8 must go there. That must be the 3. That's a 2 now, which is working. So that's 3 and 8. 8 goes up at the top of the grid. These two squares are 4 and 5. Um, what do we need in this column? 4 and 7. We can do that. Oh, and this seven arrow therefore requires a two here, and we need five and nine to finish off the puzzle. That's just so clever. That is so clever, I cannot tell you. Absolutely amazing. How can three by three Sudokus be interesting? And yet I defy anybody to try this puzzle and not have found those interesting. Some of them were really cool. The way you could colour them and then work out a little bit of the logic in terms of the maths. Each one of them is just a tiny little, uh, I don't know, appetizer. You know, it's like a something, a morsel that you put into your ma mouth and it's sort of ambrosial in its quality. Absolutely brilliant, brilliant innovation from Analytical Ninja. I hope that's not the last of those types of puzzles we see. Um, it's very rare on the channel we get to do something so original, um, but I really loved it. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I do enjoy them, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.